Jim, as one of my closest lifelong friends, you know that I, like you, have had a lifetime interest in really trying to understand God. And as I've done this in recent years, I have focused on some of the properties of God that, that force me to think about God's reality or, or, or non-existence. And one of them is God's relationship with time, because if we certainly read superficially, the texts of almost all religions, and we'll stick with the Abrahamic religions in the West, it does see, seem that God is able to know the future. And that becomes a very complex subject when you know the physics of the world and cosmology and the nature of time. I want to come to you, not as a scientist, but as a historian and as somebody very familiar with the texts, to look at the texts of the Bible as we have it and, and, and explore whether, how God knows the future. It's very interesting because we have texts in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, that seem to give a different story, an almost opposite story, than this idea that God knows and determines everything ahead of time. Uh, they've become a, always been a problem. Some of the best known ones, for example, there's the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God presumably would know all about that. But he says to his heavenly court, you know, I've got a report uh, that they are really misbehaving down there. And I'm going to go down to see whether what I've heard is correct or not. Now, first of all, why would he be getting a report if he's God? He would know. You can see this is a very, very different view of God. The way it's usually been explained is, well, this is a very crude anthropomorphic accommodation to storytelling or something like that. But it occurs often enough in the older sections of the Hebrew Bible that it sounds like God is more a participant in history than a full determiner of history. Mm. That God himself uh, is also wondering and watching and waiting to see how things unfold. And there are forms of theism that have developed out of that, namely process theism, that would say that's in fact what's happening. God is a great advocate of the good, but without any guarantee of, of, of what's ahead. And uh, other examples as well. Do you know Abraham? Do you remember that story where Abraham argues with God? It's, it said argued. But essentially he reminds God, um, look, you're the God of all the earth. You're just. So if you did injustice, then that would not be becoming to you. And basically God says, you know, you're right. I, now that I think that over, uh, I think you're making a good point. The way I interpret these myself is not so much um, great philosophical issues of uh, omniscience and omnipresence and all of those sorts of things, but really this fundamental Hebrew idea that humans are made in the image of God. And just as humans anticipate and wish and hope and work towards certain things that they can even try to bring about but are never guaranteed in the end uh, that God in some parallel way would be working. I think that's very appealing in our world today. Uh, it, it so has you, a certain... you would in a sense say that the traditional understanding of God's omnipotence absolute power and omniscience, absolute foreknowledge of everything, is, is really more of a philosophical concept than either a historical one or something embedded in the text, that, that the God that you see ha has less of those powers, but that may not make God less, but really might reflect upon the fact that we then are more like God. That's right. In creativity and all sorts of ways. I don't think it's necessarily philosophical, though I think it's also historical, because these ideas of God knowing everything, predetermining everything, do work their way into the biblical text. But once again, it tends to be, like many of ideas, afterlife, judgment, and so forth, 
in the Hellenistic Greek period, and particularly in the New Testament. Not that the New Testament starts at all, but the New Testament is our best reflection. It's also in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Very strong deterministic mm. idea that everything's predetermined, everything's predestined. I think it was a way that people came to cope with the confusion and tragedies of life so that if in some strange way you could account for evil and horror even by saying, well, in some way we don't understand, it has a predetermined mm -hmm. meaning. And but, in the end, we'll look back and see. You know, I, th I think that's right, but, but you still, there are instances in the, in the Hebrew Bible in which God is making prophecies about cities, about Babylon, about this and about that, that, that supposedly came to pass. So God is talking some things about the future. That's true, but many of those are uh, conditional. You know, if this happens and this happens, for example, Israel, if you turn and remember me, I will bring you back from exile. Well, what if you don't turn and remember? Then presumably he might not. And so even in those prophecies, if you read them carefully, I think there's that sense of still working with history. God has still got to be a kind of partner with reality and can't magically predetermine reality. It's a very different view. So, so in those passages, I mean, understood the way you're understanding mm -hmm. it, what is happening? Is God knowing the future, or is God just saying that uh, based on these conditions that he would then implement something that yeah. he's now... He's now deciding. He, he, he's, not, he's, saying, he's not saying, I know the future, it's going to happen this way, but rather, if this thing happens, I'll do one thing, and mm -hmm. since I'm pretty strong, I can make it happen. And if something else happens, I'll do something else. So it's not really like a, a, a prophecy of knowing the future. It's a prophecy saying, look, if you do this, I'm going to do that, like you tell, you tell your child. You try to That's, implement the future. Implement yeah. the future as opposed right. to knowing the future. And sometimes you change your mind. That's the really odd thing. Yeah. Moses gets God to change a couple of yeah, times. I think that's pretty cool. And I think it's amazing, yeah. <laughs> it, it adds a new way of thinking about God that once again is more reflective of our best sense of ourselves. How we can have hopes, aspirations, dreams, and desperately want something to happen and work like hell to have it happen, and yet it doesn't happen. But uh, we, we only have reality to deal with.